What is going on YouTube? Welcome to today's video. For all of you SC430 followers, I know a ton of you own these cars or are looking to buy one. I'm gonna show you for anywhere from like five to $700, how to wrap it entirely yourself. So I'm going to save you thousands of dollars. A quality wrap job would probably cost about 25 to $3,500 um, to get an SC430 professionally wrapped. So I'm gonna show you how to do it literally at just cost of materials. So this SC430 is currently wrapped in Nardo Gray. Um, you can go check out this video. I previously just did a bunch of time lapses of me wrapping it. But for this, I'm actually gonna be making a how-to. So aside from just my normal Lexus builds where I have a few videos of me fixing it up, this is gonna be a, a little mini side series of how to wrap your car, and specifically a hardtop convertible or a coupe. I've had a lot of comments, people asking me, to make videos on how to wrap. And so I figured here it is, I would do it. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to prep it, which basically means disassembling the entire car. One of the biggest things about a vinyl wrap is the prep work that goes into it and specifically the disassembly. So there's a few things you really do wanna remove off of the car. So a few of the things that you do wanna remove are headlights, the grill, front bumper, the side markers. You wanna remove the door handles, the mirrors, tail lights, the badging, the spoiler, all that. So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to get all of that removed. And it really isn't too difficult. So even if you aren't really mechanically inclined with a few set of tools and you know, with my help, I will show you exactly how to do this. So once again, I'm not gonna be doing any wrapping in this video. This is strictly gonna be disassembling and getting this thing ready to get wrapped. So stay tuned if you're waiting for that. All right, this is the new vinyl wrap. So from a recent community post, I asked you all what color you think it will be. Um, had a ton of guesses and two of you were correct. So the color we are gonna be wrapping our Lexus with is blue. And now hear me out, I'm sure your first thought is red is not gonna look good with blue, what are you doing? But you just gotta trust me, this blue is insane. So shout out to Han and LPF. You guys got it right. Nice job, you two. I will be sending you both an Atlantic Beach custom shirt, so I'll reach out and get your contact information so I can get those sent out. So always check those community posts. I'm gonna try to do some fun stuff where I'll just be giving away shirts, some merch, some uh, wrap products, stuff like that all the time. So, so subscribe, check out those community posts regularly. Let's go take a look. All right, here's a look at it inside. So it is almost black, which I love. So it's not gonna look like a Spider-Man car. This blue is pretty much black. So you can see it's a dark, dark blue. But it is a very metallic-y film. So it's gonna look pretty much like paint. You can see some of those metallic flakes in there. The color of this is called 3M Midnight Metallic Blue. So even the name is pretty cool. And here's a few pictures of what it looks like on some cars so you can get kind of a better reference. But I think this color is gonna look insane with the red. So it's dark enough that it looks like black, but in reality and up close, it's gonna be super, super unique. It really is a midnight blue. Let me know what you guys think. Are you excited for this color? Do you think I made a mistake? I know this might not be everyone's cup of tea, but Wanted to do something a little bit different and uh, I think that a dark color with this interior is gonna look amazing. All right, so let's get started. First thing you wanna do is roll down the windows. So in order to remove these exterior door handles, you do have to take apart the door panel in here. And in order to do that, the windows need to be rolled down. All right, now that you have the windows rolled down, we want to pop the hood and disconnect the negative battery terminal. Because while you're wrapping, you're gonna have doors open all the time and you don't wanna kill your battery leaving the lights on. So just come over here and disconnect your negative battery terminal. All right, so to remove this door panel, you're gonna want a few things. So I have flathead screwdriver, a plastic pry tool, eight millimeter socket, Phillips head screwdriver, and just this little magnetic tray to keep all the bolts in. And so first thing you wanna do is remove this piece right here. You wanna take a plastic pry tool or gently use a flathead screwdriver and pop this piece up. So you come in here, just gently pry it up until you can reach your hands back there until it goes like that. And there's just one big connector right here. So you'll just press that clip down. All right, and the next thing we wanna do is remove this little cover piece right inside the door handle. So for this, just kind of 
pull the actual handle back, take a screwdriver, and gently pop it out. Next up, you wanna remove this little tweeter cover or whatever this is. So this is really simple. You literally just pull it out like that. Next thing we're gonna do is go around removing all of the little bolts and clips. So these are ones that you press it in. So you can take your Phillips head, press that middle part in, and then these will just come out like that. So if you push it in, it decompresses the clip. So you've got one, two of those. And then on the bottom, we've got three bolts we need to remove. So if you lift up this little cover right here, you'll see these three eight millimeter bolts. So there's one right here, another one near the middle, and one more right there. All right, now that we have those three bolts off of the bottom, we've got two more things we have to remove on the sides. So we've got this Phillips head right here and a smaller Phillips head. So that one is this Phillips head screw right behind the door handle. We've got another Phillips head screw right in there. And the last one is right here. All right, so now we have all of the bolts off to remove the door panel. It's just a matter of actually removing it. So you'll come and take your pry tool, put it underneath there, and then you pull it back to kind of separate it from the actual door itself. Once you do that, you'll just go around the entire bottom, undoing all of the clips, pull the door panel out towards you. So you'll angle it like that, and then pull it up to remove it. So once again, just kind of pull out the bottom, grab it right here, and gently pull up the top. Be mindful of the little speaker over here. And then you have it free and loose. So there's a few connectors. So this white one, you'll just pull this out. And then the ball under there. And then you have to move the cord and remove the ball. Same thing with this little green one. Just pull it out. And that one just lifts straight up. Unplug this blue connector. And the last one we have is going to be right down here, the door card light. Same thing, you just push that connector in, pull it out. So now we got the entire door panel removed, and this is what we're left with. And then it's gonna be the same exact thing for the other door, so I'm not gonna make a video of me doing that, but it's gonna be the same thing. So same amount of bolts and screws everywhere. All right, and so now to remove the mirrors, you've got these three eight millimeter bolts up here, and then you have to unplug this connector right here. Let's get that unplugged. And now I'm gonna unscrew those three bolts and the mirror should come right out. All right, this part's a little bit trickier. So now we have to actually remove the door handle. And what we have to do is remove this covering right here to get access. So what I do is I take this little blade. It's just a cheap little razor blade thing. I just peel it back a little bit and then slice that black adhesive just so that way it keeps it nice and clean. It doesn't rip. Because you want to get access to all of these bolts. Just about there. So now we've got one, two, three, four 10 millimeter bolts. All right, now that once you have those four bolts removed, I'm just gonna kinda wanna pry this off. And now you've got access to the inside of the door. Now what we actually have to do though is roll up this window. So we have to roll up the window to get access to a connector back here. So you wanna go reconnect the negative terminal, take your window switch, plug it back in, turn the car back on, and then roll the window up. And now you can turn the car off, unplug this connector again and disconnect the negative. You have to roll the window down in order to remove the door panel and then you have to roll the window back up in order to get access to these connectors back here that I'm about to show you. And then taking a look inside the door, you should be able to see that yellow thing. So here's maybe a little bit of a better look. So this yellow connector, you have to push out like that. So you can see originally it 
it's down, you push it out, and now you pull it out. So you can see that, so you can see the end right there where it goes into that hole. So you pull it out towards you. So now you have that disconnected from the door. All right, and then lastly, what you have to do is pop this piece out. And it will remove a T30 Torx. So you can see right in there, you got that T30 Torx. Loosen it. This bolt does not come out all the way, so don't worry about that. You'll just loosen it enough. So now once that bolt is loosened, you can take your plastic pry tool, gently lift it up, and there you go. This part's super easy, so now all you do is you slide the door handle this way, and then it lifts out. So slide it in, and then that comes out, and same right there. You have these two little plastic black covers. You'll just want to remove these. Just remove that one. And remove that one as well. So as you can see, we now have this door handle completely removed, as well as the mirror. And this is huge because you do not want to have to wrap around a door handle. This is something else you definitely want to do. Label your bolts. So right after you remove them, put them in a little Ziploc bag and label them. You don't want to be left wondering which bolt goes to what. So get a few Ziploc bags, a Sharpie, and just label everything. Now that we have that door all done, I'm just going to kind of work my way around. Next thing we want to do is remove this. Um, I'm not entirely sure the size because this car was previously painted and the shop that reassembled it um, must not have put it back together using the same bolts. So I don't know what's factory, but you might have some screws or some little bolts up in here. Okay, so now that I got that little trim piece removed, I'm gonna work on the front. I'm gonna start by taking off this little trim piece on the hood and then actually removing the front bumper and then the headlights. All right, so to remove this trim piece, there is one, two, three, four, five little bolts. All right, it's gonna be similar with the front bumper. Don't know the factory specs, but you're gonna have one, two clips right here, as well as two clips on this side, underneath the fender liner. So this line's all cracked, so I'm gonna be replacing this. But you're gonna to have to remove this fender liner, and then you will see screw right up there. Real quick, something else I forgot to mention. On the grill, there is there's three bolts you have to remove from the grill. There's one right here, two right here, and three right there. Once you remove all of those, you can pull the bumper off a little bit. You disconnect the side marker lights, and then disconnect these as well. Same thing, you've got that side marker light, that same connector, and then you have to unplug the washer reservoir. So this is the tubing for the headlight cleaners. So unplug that, and now your bumper is fully disconnected. Now that we have the front bumper off, we're gonna take out the headlights. So there's got, we've got three bolts. There's also this clip. So for these, little pry tool is amazing for these clips. So you will just, I'm trying to do this with my left hand. Just sneak it under there enough to get under that top part. And then you go like that and you can super easily remove any of those clips. So you have one of these little clips, one 10 millimeter bolt, another 10 millimeter bolt right here, and then you'll have one right here, which I already removed. So you'll remove those three, and then you can slide the headlight out and unplug it. And just like that, we've got the entire front pretty much removed. So we've got the headlights, as well as the front bumper off, um, and then this little trim piece right up there that goes on the hood. But now let's start working on the back. All right, now let's get these taillights and the spoiler removed. Taillights are extremely easy. So you've got this one bolt right here. Then to get to the top part of the taillight, it is simply just these two little bolts right here. 
you're just gonna take off this one bolt and then you'll pull it out away from the car. So you'll grab the tail light and pull it out that way because you can see it has those two little pins. There's those two pins right there go into those holes. So you'll pull it out. And then as for removing this top little tail light section, it's those two bolts, but then you have this little clip where you have to pull it away from you. So as you can see, it goes on like that. So you undo the two bolts and then you slide it out that way. And real quick, forgot to mention, we are gonna have to take off this entire little trunk liner um, to get to the spoiler. So it's just a bunch of these little clip things. All right, so once you get the entire trunk liner off, there are going to be two bolts you have to remove. So there's one and two. So there's just two right in there. But really the hardest part is getting the adhesive removed. You really just have to remove those two bolts and then you have to carefully remove the seal. So what I did is once you get the bolts removed, I just gently started lifting up the side. I took a razor blade and I sliced all that adhesive because if you just pull it up, you're gonna crack the spoiler. So lift it up a little bit, get a razor blade and then just cut that adhesive. But yeah, now we've got pretty much all of this set. Forgot um, the rear wheels, they have this little trim piece as well. So it's the same thing with the front, just a few of these little screws you have to remove. Last thing that you can do is remove the antenna. That'll make it a lot easier when you're wrapping this piece right here. Highly recommend that you wash the car before you disassemble it. The reason why I didn't wash it before is because the car's wrapped, so it's already gonna be pretty clean underneath. And I'm just gonna do a quick little wash, but do a really good wash before you take this apart because you don't wanna be shooting water all over these wires and connectors. So wash the car and then disassemble it. But now we are pretty much all set. I'm going to remove the vinyl. So I'm gonna show you guys how easy it really is to remove a vinyl wrap. not gonna lie I actually love how the silver looks so the silver with those wheels you know if this paint wasn't so bad I would be really tempted to just leave it as it is for a little bit because that silver is cool all right and this is pretty much the best way to remove a vinyl wrap pull it outside let it sit in the sun for a little bit because the sun will heat it up and um, you know it makes it much easier to remove because without the heat the stuff's pretty stiff so you as you could maybe see from that time lapse, you have to really pull in a few areas, but as soon as the sun hits it, super malleable and you can easily take it off. So for the rest of this stuff, I'm just going to let it sit in the sun and then take the wrap off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the wrap off and sand down the entire car. Um, you don't have to do that. So if your paint's in pretty good shape, you definitely do not have to do any sanding. I am going to sand down a bunch of the spots. So when this was repainted, there were a ton of, looks like big specks of dirt that got in the clear coat um, because you can't see all the stuff underneath the wrap. So I'm just gonna be sanding down all these bad spots. Uh, let's see, there were a few paint drips it is important to note that vinyl wraps do pretty much show, um, you know, imperfections underneath. So if you have like flaking clear coat or a big speck of dirt under there, you will see that. But yes, yeah, so let's just let this vinyl heat up. Then we'll get this all removed, get the car all sanded and prepped. And then we'll do one quick little wash, pull it back inside and we'll be ready to go.